one thing as sync producers we have to have is what I call antennas. We have to have our antennas up. And I always say I listen with both my ears. I have a producer ear and I have a listener ear. And my producer ear will tell me, oh, this is something viable. This is something you should be paying attention to. This is something that's going to be a big deal coming up. My listener ear is just with stuff I like. I'm like, oh, that sounds good. So if you're proud of it, then that's all that really matters. For me, music is something that I don't choose to do. It chooses to fucking do me, you know? Right. You don't have any choice. You have to make the music. If you're going to make money doing it, great. If you're not, it's still great, you know? Just keep doing it. I learned very quickly that people don't want to hear that in a night. It's cool to do a showcase in a, in a spotlight, like, Jazzy Jeff is fantastic for that. Watch a Jazzy show, and he's jamming a party, and then he does these little sets where he's showing off his tricks. That's not what a DJ should be doing in a nightclub, in my opinion, because people want to dance and have a good time. They want to enjoy what's happening. Now, do LLCs, create a business, create, trademark that name. It's gonna cost money. But when you do that, you hold your weight differently. People start to respect you. I, I can't make that enough. Like, I've always been somebody trying to prove myself everywhere I've gone. But the minute you put an LLC or something behind yourself, it makes it a different thing. You know what I mean? It's you mm -hmm. put, what you invest in you becomes a business. And then you start mm -hmm. acting like a business. You start treating yourself like a business. By the time you know it, people start treating you like a business. I definitely find breaking into a, a certain scene in a new area is hard. Knowing once you find that right person who, first of all, it tends to be somebody that, you know, can connect you to a lot of people, but also it tends to be somebody who helps everybody. But there's always a connector. Once you find that person and once they introduce you to a few people, it tends to be a little bit easier to go ahead and get gigs. The difference in libraries and agencies is an agent normally works with single songs or batches of songs, and they normally work with a few clients that they pitch music to. This agency might work with Audi or Nike. They might work with a brand, and their main gig is pitching music to that brand. That's different than a music library that is a music wholesaler that music directors and music supervisors can go to to procure music for their film. The difference is slight, but it's an important difference because there's different music going to each and there's a different approach going to each. So we're gonna talk about the JLo tour, but we're gonna talk about it in the context of personal finances. I'm a certified financial planner and a licensed financial advisor. I work with arts, entertainment, and media on the investment side. Babyface told me, he said, Brent, you can sit down on the piano and play chords and sing a melody, and it moves the audience that's right there. That's generally a good song. Before the production stuff starts to happen, before you start adding strings and all the, the drums and the bass, if you can just sing that melody with a basic acoustic piano or guitar and the song really moves, that's generally the song. So I test my music out on just that. You actually have to fucking get up in the morning and treat it like a job, otherwise it looks a bit grim. I think the main thing is songwriting and avoiding writer's block is to get out of your own way. Oh shit, what should I do? Because when I was 18, or maybe 19, I wrote two songs that were my first two hits in Ireland. I didn't try to do anything. I just played, I let it just flow instead of, oh shit, what, how can I write a hit? It'll generally start with a beat in my head and then the lyrics follow. I don't play any instruments, but what I can do is I can sing everything, all the beats, I can sing it. And if I sing it to my producer, they pretty much know what I'm trying to do. The goal for that is to get their followers to use that sound, to make that sound a trend um, that kind of converts over to your Spotify, your Apple Music, and your profile. Let's say, I would say over the course of about three to six months, depending on how often you gig out, 
If you see that your average crowd is around 50 or more, I would say that's the point at which you should seriously consider being willing to trade shows out of state or where I would say in terms of local draw, you'd be ready. The other reason why I say that is because that's the amount of people that realistically in a small bar setting or in a uh, DIY show setting or a house show setting would be a fun night for everyone involved where the band would have a chance to sell merch and have a chance to you know have a good night. I don't think they understand that when w- w- this this is where the experience comes in. You have 30 minutes to open up for a band that in front of thousands of people you can't take 15 to 20 seconds to, to be single hand tuning your guitars. You need these tricks. You need to be able to switch. You need to be able to have the pedals. You need to be able to do it fast. Whoever thinks that they're good, if they're never going to take that step to galvanize a fan base, you're dead in the water from day one.